How's it going everyone? This video is going to be over standard deviation projections. Standard deviation projections can be used to find targets, areas to expect retracements or reversals, as well as a confluence to an existing strategy. This video will be focused on the settings of the Fibonacci, which price like to project, which areas to look for a retracement or reversal, what to expect after hitting max expansion, as well as pairing with PD arrays and overlapping existing projections. So let's get into it. So the first thing we are going to go over are the FIB settings. So if you see here, we are using a FIB retracement tool on TradingView. And the settings we have here are 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2.5, and negative 4. And if you specifically want to see the color I'm using, it is right here, and my background is very transparent. I have my values on the left side in the middle with a font size of 10. So now that we have our settings, let's get into how to anchor this Fibonacci retracement tool. So here's an example of what the Fibonacci tool will look like once it is projected out. However, where do I anchor this Fibonacci tool to get these projections? And that is what we are going to go over next. So when price creates a smart money reversal or a reversal pattern, so for example here, price is trending up, makes a high, low, higher high, lower low, I'm going to look for the manipulation leg. And that manipulation leg is the swing that swept liquidity before changing the state of delivery or shifting structure. So for example here, this low to this high that swept liquidity, that will be the manipulation leg. I then take my projection tool or my Fibonacci retracement tool and project this out such as so. So let's get into the charts and look at a few examples of projecting these out before we get into the rest of the PDF. So here we have price action trending up. Let's see if we get a smart money reversal. And here you can see we get an aggressive price action out and then back into the range if you've seen my last video on accumulation, manipulation, and distribution. So where is the price leg that made the new high before the new low? And so from this low to this high, that would be the manipulation leg. And so projecting that out from our high to our low, you can see we get our projection put on the screen here. So let's go to a few more examples of just projecting this out. So here we have price kind of consolidating Let's see what happens. So we get an aggressive move out and then back into the range, changing the state of delivery. So where is the manipulation leg or the leg that made the new low before the new high? So from right here at this high to this low, that would be the manipulation leg. So projecting that from our low to our high, we have our projection. So here we are, we have price trending up. And there we go, we get a sweep and then displacement down. So take a moment, where is this manipulation leg? So you can see price from this low made a new high before displacing down. So our manipulation leg is from this high to this low or from this low to this high. So then projecting it out, I go from this high to this low and have my projection. So now that we have practiced identifying that manipulation leg and projecting it out, let's go back to the PDF and see what we are looking for in these projections. So here we are back in the PDF, and although there are many ways to use these projections, we're going to focus on the negative 2 to negative 2.5 and the negative 4 as areas of interest. So when price reaches the negative 2 to negative 2.5 standard deviations, I'm looking for either a retracement or a reversal from this area. If price displaces and closes through this area, then I'm looking for the max expansion or the negative four standard deviation. Once hitting max expansion, what I can do is mark out a discount in premium of this leg here and look for price to retrace to an equilibrium. The next thing I want to talk about is pairing these standard deviations with PD arrays. For example here, the negative one has a fair value gap lining up with it. And then the negative two to negative 2.5 has sell side liquidity resting between them. I personally love to use these projections and then see if it lines up with equal highs or a fair value gap or some sort of PD array. So let's go back into the charts and look over these concepts. So here we are back with our first example. Let's go ahead and mark out these areas and then look to see if any PD arrays line up with them. So marking out the 2 to 2.5 standard deviations as well as the fourth standard deviation, let's see if any PD arrays line up in these areas. So if you notice, we have sell side liquidity resting here as well as here. Because this is just right above the negative 2 to 2.5 standard deviations, 
I consider this the low hanging fruit. Then we can mark out the sell side liquidity resting within this area here. So let's see how this plays out. And another thing you can do is when we get another manipulation leg, such as here, we can also project that out as well and get matching confluences. So you can see how the negative one here overlaps with the negative two to negative 2.5 and the negative two to negative 2.5 here overlaps with the negative four standard deviations. So let's go ahead and continue these out and see what happens. So you can see we hit this low hanging fruit and then get a little retracement. And here you can see, we don't quite take those lows, but we do reach into the middle of this area. And now, if you've noticed, we are into our second example, as we have a manipulation leg here. And so let's go ahead and project that out. And so now, if we are looking, what do we see? Well, we see we have a negative 2 to negative 2.5 here. Go ahead and mark that out. And then we have our negative 4 right there. Are there any PD arrays that line up in here? Well, we do have this order block here. If we mark out the mean threshold of that, it'll be right around the second standard deviation. We went ahead and marked that out, and then we have all these equal highs resting above here with the fourth standard deviation. So let's go ahead and mark those out as well. So let's let this play out. And there we go, we reach into that fourth standard deviation. So let's clean up the chart a little bit here. So letting this continue to play out. And there you see we get to our third example. So let's go ahead and mark out this manipulation leg once again and project it out. Let's see what happens here. You can see we hit our negative one standard deviation and currently getting a retracement. Let's see if we reach into the negative two to negative 2.5 or the fourth standard deviation, and do we have any PD arrays lining up with those? Well, looking left, we have a fair value gap right here, so we can go ahead and mark that out. And generally with a fair value gap like this, I'd be looking for the near side here, as we have equal lows, but we can also mark out the consequent encroachment of this. And then the next thing, looking left, our fourth standard deviation lines up pretty closely with these lows right here. So those would be my two objectives for this market maker cell model. Here you can see we reach into the negative 2 to negative 2.5 standard deviations. We get a retracement here. And then finally we come down and hit our fourth standard deviation here below this low. So let's go ahead and zoom out here and see how this all worked out. And you can see we still have some projections down here. So let's skip ahead and see if price ever reaches those lows. And you can see here, price does sweep those lows. But we still have this four standard deviation, which is aligned with our two to 2.5 right in this area. And there we go. And if you notice, we have another manipulation like here that we can project out. And you can see we hit into our two to 2.5 standard deviations there. Now price is starting to trend up, looking where is our manipulation leg? Right here, so I can project this out. We have our two to 2.5 right here. And now we are in that two to 2.5 standard deviations. So sorry for the little bit of a mess here. Let me clean this up. So I hope in this example you saw that I can project manipulation legs out to give me targets. Using PD arrays, I can add to those targets. And then using multiple projections, I can add to the confluence. For example, when the negative four from one projection lines up with the negative two to negative 2.5 of another projection. So let's take a look at one example of this going top down and how you can use it on multiple different timeframes as well. So here we are on NQ daily chart. And if you can see, price reached up into this daily fair value gap on a Tuesday, made a reversal, and then the next day expanded lower and displaced below these lows. Anticipating a classic sell week with a Tuesday high, I'm anticipating Thursday to continue lower. So with that idea in mind, let's go ahead and drop down to the hourly chart. So here we are on the hourly chart, and this is the daily fair value gap here. 
Where is the manipulation on this time frame into that daily fair value gap? Well, here is the high into that fair value gap. Where is this swing or the low that made that high? Right here. So from here to here, that is our manipulation. So projecting that out from high to low, let's go ahead and zoom out here. So marking out Thursday right here to right here, we could anticipate price reaching into the two to 2.5 standard deviations right here. And another thing you can do is mark out the consequent encroachment of these standard deviations. So if we're anticipating price to move lower into this area, let's drop down to a lower time frame and see what happens. So down here on the 15 minute chart, we'll go ahead and get into London session. We're going to go ahead and mark out our midnight open here and let's see what happens. You can see Asia consolidation, London moves aggressively lower and then back into the range, accumulation, manipulation, so anticipating distribution. What do we have over here on the left side that is interesting? Well, we have equal highs resting here. So let's see what happens here. You can see we just sweep a low here, continue higher, and there we reach into those equal highs. Now, since London is retracing in terms of the weekly profile, I'm anticipating New York to move lower into this 2 to 2.5 standard deviation area. So let's drop down to a five minute chart. So as we near New York open, let's see what happens. And here on New York, you can see we get a big wick up and wick down. So let's drop down to a lower time frame to see what that looks like. So down here on the two minute, nothing really interesting towards the downside yet, but I am going to mark out this order block here and see if it forms. So here we get displacement below this order block and this wick here. So looking at this price action here, where is our manipulation? So you can see this is the leg that made the new high and where is the low of that leg? Right there. So that is our manipulation. So projecting that out from our high to our low, there we have our projection. Now, the next thing we want to look for is do we have any PD arrays lining up with those projections? So looking left, what do we have resting just above negative two standard deviation? We have our London low. So that would ideally be the target for this as it is a low hanging fruit. Let's zoom back in here and see if we can find an entry. Now, the first entry I would be looking for is a retest of this order block here my stop on this high, and then I'd be looking to target those London lows. So let's see if that tags me in. It does, and we start to get our distribution lower. And you can see we leave equal lows here, and we start to get a retracement. So marking out these other up close candles here, let's see if those provide a reaction. It does. And then we go in, we hit our London lows. So just to review what happened here, we have a classic sell week. So anticipating expansion into Thursday, we drop down to the hourly chart. We find the manipulation on the hourly chart and project it out, which gives us our overall target of this yellow box here, which let's see if that hits. And it does reach into there and the consequent encroachment of that. Now, the next thing I did was drop down into the lower time frame, look at the daily profile, and then find an entry targeting those London lows. Now, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. I am planning on my next video combining my previous video with this video, so an accumulation, manipulation, and distribution combined with standard deviations. If that is something that interests you, please let me know in the comment section below. And other than that, I'll see you guys next week. Have a great one.